Morning everyone. I've come out to Grindleford in the Peak District. I've got really amazing conditions once again. Today is going to be all about my camera settings or woodland photography. So the first things I want to talk about are white balance and metering. So white balance, I always set that to auto. You don't have to, and you can get some really interesting results in camera if you set your white balance to something like tungsten or for cloudy weather. However, you can change all of those white balance settings when you get back into Lightroom later. So I just leave it on auto and I can do all the hard work later in Lightroom. Metering, I tend to either use matrix mode or spot metering. If you've got it on matrix, it'll look at the entire area and it'll kind of evaluate it and work out the best settings automatically. Spot is more nuanced, more focused. It'll, wherever you put your little um, square on the back of your screen, it'll focus on that point and work out your metering from that point. So if it's, quite a, if it's a scene with quite a lot of dynamic range, such as a sunrise where you've got a really bright sky and a dark foreground, depending on where you put your little square on the dark bit or the light bit, will uh, affect the overall metering of your scene. So, focusing. I tend to keep it on AFS for most of the time because in the woodland everything's pretty still so you don't need to be continually focusing. If I was doing that, if I was tracking birds or fast moving objects, I'd change it to AFC and that'll continually autofocus but AFS is fine for here. Um, the focus area mode, I am using pinpoint which means I can use the joystick on the back of the camera to pinpoint the exact area I want to focus on. Uh, in terms of um, shooting mode, I will sometimes use manual mode where I can set every single setting, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, but you can save yourself a lot of the work uh, by setting it to aperture priority mode. When you do that, you can set your aperture and then the camera will automatically work out the shutter speed accordingly to make sure that your exposure is bright enough. Just make sure if you do do that, that you don't have too long of a shutter speed when you're using it handheld because then you're going to get shake and motion blur. So make, if you're going to have a long shutter speed, make sure you're on a tripod.
Okay, aperture. So, most of the time in the woodland I'll be using somewhere between an F number of 7.1 and F11 and that'll usually give me enough depth of field so that everything is in focus from front to back. If you're using a lower F number, I can show you now on the back of the camera, I'm at F.4, you'll see the tree is in focus but my background is out of focus. If I now put my F number up to say F13, just put my ISO up to compensate, focus on the tree, you'll see much more of the background is in focus. So F13, you have deep depth of field, more in focus. F4, you have shallow depth of field, less in focus. So you just need to decide what you want in focus in your scene. If you want a deep depth of field with nearly everything in focus, choose a higher F number. And if you want a less in focus or your subject that's closer to you in focus but not your background, use a lower F number. So shutter speed. Most of the time I don't select shutter speed because, like I said before, I'm using aperture priority mode, which means that the camera is automatically setting the shutter speed. If I'm using quite a high F number, it'll give me a slowish shutter speed. And if I'm using a low F number, it'll give me quite a high one. Um, but what I need to do is pay attention to that shutter speed because if it's too slow, even if I'm using a tripod, I want to make sure that I put my ISO up to compensate so that the Shutter speed is not too slow to give me camera shake. Even just a little bit of wind or my camera strap moving can cause camera shake. So if my uh, shutter speed is below, I don't know, a second or so, I'll probably put my ISO up so that it just compensates and puts that shutter speed up. So I think that's about it, the fog's all but lifted now, so i uh, going to get back, drive home and uh, see what we've got. Okay, so another great morning in the woods, great conditions again, foggy weather. I wanted to try a different woodland area this time, so I went to Grindleford, which is near Padley Gorge, and if uh, you saw my video a couple of weeks back, you might recognise parts of those woods because it's very near. Uh, I'll link up top there. Uh, to the video I did uh, at Padley Gorge a couple of weeks ago and yeah uh, those trees just look amazing they're so knotted and twisted and then you've got all the moss covering them and you've got the rocks at the bottom with the moss on top as well and then the foggy background just you know it's the icing on the cake or the cherry on the on the top it's great um, so yeah they were my camera settings uh, that I've been using for woodland uh, the first thing to say is that you know, they're not going to work for every single occasion or setting. You obviously need to adjust them for the environment that you're in and the conditions that you've got on the day. Um, they're what work for me on the day. And the second thing to say is that, you know, these are not definitive either. I'm, I'm still learning and these are what I've found out to be the best settings uh, for woodland so far in my experience. But, you know, I'm interested to hear what your settings are and maybe if you think I could improve my images by changing some of my settings, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to talk about some of the prints I did. It was just one image that I printed. This was one of my favourites. Um, this is on glossy paper, so it's actually this paper. And I talked about this last week uh, when I was doing the unboxing of my new printer. Again, I'll link that up top. Um, so this, I've had this paper just lying in a cupboard for years. Um, I think they still make it. Uh, it's probably a different box now because this one's so old. Uh, it's just HP Advance and this is glossy. I prefer matte, but uh, like I said, this is what I've got at the minute. I need to use it up. So um, 
this one is on, on the HP Glossy. It is quite nice. It's got a lot of detail, even in the kind of the dehaze bit here, which I, I turned down the clarity in Lightroom and the dehaze and the texture, and it still looks really detailed and nice. And all the grass and the moss, you've got a great texture there. It's just come out really well. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. Um, I did another one on matte paper. So this was my first attempt on matte. Um, again, this is paper that I had lying around. It's not even a branded paper. I can't tell you what it is because I haven't got the box anymore. But I know it wasn't like a particularly well-known brand. It's just some kind of cheap, standard matte printing paper. Um, and this one didn't come out too well. I think I might have had the settings set to gloss when I printed this. Um, and so the, you can't see a lot of detail in the trees here. They're too dark. And here it's gone a bit strange, some of the whites, and there's just less detail in this area. But I do still like something about this image. It's got, um, it's got a lot of drama, and because of the, the extra contrast from the darks, blacks, and the whites, it does have a kind of, it just adds, it does add something to the image. So I still do like that, even though technically it's not the best print. And after I adjusted my settings, this is another one on matte. Um, and you can see now it's much less dark than this one, but you do get the uh, the detail in the trees now. So um, yeah, overall this is my favourite print. It came out really nice, uh, and I think when I get some um, some better matte paper, I think they'll be even better still. So yeah, really pleased with that. That's it for this one. Uh, so thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed, and I know that a lot of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, I can see that in the YouTube analytics. I think it's about 80% of all people who watch my videos are not subscribers. So, you know, why not subscribe? Click the big red button down there. Or uh, you can also click on my face just over here and um, subscribe. It'll really help me out. It'll help my channel grow. And you'll also see my videos every week in your subscription feed. So thanks for everyone for watching once again. I uh, really appreciate everyone watching the videos and supporting the channel. That's it for now and hopefully catch you again for next week's video. Bye.